Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Alberto from CSCS. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the relationship and the things we can do when we combine containers and libfabric. So when we talk about uh, bringing near native network performance to generic and portable containers, uh, the more established and more practiced approach is generally the one of taking a an optimized MPI stack from the host and inject and replacing it into the container. This has been done several times on several papers, and it's generally well documented. Uh, but uh, this approach has several problems and is very constrained, especially by MPI ABI compatibility. I think Mark just did an excellent job of explaining what's the problem, making some great examples. So there are ways of overcoming this problem and giving us some more some more uh, options one is that of a translation layer there are also some uh, work going on in in uh, improving abi uh, abi compatibility of the mpi as i think jeff will talk in a little while another option is to uh, work with um, communication frameworks instead of the mpi libraries themselves so what is a communication framework is a is a piece of software that sits between the network hardware and another consumer application in my in in the hpc case we're talking about mpi libraries so basically it's a it's a piece of software that can provide an abstraction of the network hardware from a utilizer from uh, to the mpi so the mpi has a unified uh, in as unified api and unified high level interface and uh, under the hood the communication framework can talk to different types of fabrics. Um, the two most, uh, let's say, prominent communication frameworks are LibFabric or UCX. You probably have heard about them. So uh, LibFabric, just a quick introduction, is an o open source project. Um, and it does exactly what I just explained. It provides a high level unified interface. And under the hood, it has several different components that act as, as backends to connect to different types of of fabrics. So um, when working with containers and libfabric, we have generally three different approaches. We can completely replace the libfabric into a container from the with a one coming from the host. We can inject a just a provider into, into the container, or we can, we can completely inject uh, the whole libfabric stack into a container that, do that doesn't have one. And this is the case with uh, NGC containers, for example. So the first approach is moving from the left type of diagram from MPI replacement. We want to do move to target um, the lib fabric. You see here we are rewriting, we are bind mounting and overwriting completely the M the MPI, and here we're just doing that with the lib fabric and we don't touch the MPI. Um, uh, if you, I'm going very fast, but if you want any details about this, there is a paper published that goes in more into formalities and, and rigorous evaluation. So this is uh, an experiment I did a um, little bit more than a year ago. This is an OZU bidirectional bandwidth test on ALPS, uh, our latest generation system at CSCS. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from from the projection from the picture, but I can assure you that there are four data series in this in this plot. There is one native MPI and three container MPIs. So, um, and we are just uh, working at the libfabric level. It also works with applications. This is an example of Gromax. Um, so, in in general, there the this is good applicability, um, but. We cannot just stop here because libfabric gives us the possibility of compiling separately uh, a provider. So it as a dynamically linkable provider. So this um, this external component that can be just picked up at runtime by a by a, the another libfabric with which a provider was not compiled with. So the I the idea is now that we we move from MPI replacement we. We went to replacing completely the fabric, but now we are not even touching the lib fabric into the container, and we're just adding a provider for a fabric that the container was not initially thought to work with. And we also demonstrated that this can work on Pits Dined, our previous flagship system. This is an open, uh, basically the orange line is an open MPI container. If we add the provider for the Cray uh, for the Cray interconnect, we get to the green line. And the blue and purple lines are the native one, our native counterparts. 
Um, okay, so we replaced the, the lip fabric, we added the lip fabric, uh, we, we added a component to the lip fabric. What, hap what happens if the container doesn't have a communication framework uh, at all, like lip fabric at all? And this is the case of the NVIDIA NGC containers. The, uh, they are very popular for ML and AI applications, but they do not include the lip fabric. So, and this leads to very bad scaling on interconnects like the HP Slingshot 11 because nic the nickel, which is responsible to, for communication between containers and ranks in general, will just fall back to the UDP sockets. However, we can still completely mount libfabric and its dependencies from the host. We can mount a plugin from AWS, it's available on GitHub, and we can just tell nickel to use the the plugin that we just uh, that we just added to the container, and if we do all this, we can actually leverage the Slingshot 11 interconnect. So, in this is also a test that we made on um, on Alps, and the the gray the gray line and, and the gray dots are the original NGC containers, and the and the red dots are the ones once we added the HP uh, custom lib fabric and the nickel plugin. So that's basically all for me, just a quick recap. Uh, lib approaches based on lib fabric and communication frameworks are an alternative when we want to work with network performance on containers. We can replace the lib fabric, we can augment the lib fabric, or in case of NGC containers, we can just bring everything from, from the host. Thank you.